Скажите, пожалуйста, что вы думаете об эффекте Мандела? Tell us, please, what do you think of the Mandela effect? Interesting question. Эффект Мандела, я думаю, что многие о нем знают. I suppose many are familiar with the Mandela effect. It is the effect of information that comes through in a strange way, when you are under the impression that a certain event took place, but in reality the historical timeline shows us that there was no such event. And the effect you get in the consciousness is quite confusing. And the name, the Mandela effect, was given specifically after the most vivid representative of this effect, Comrade Mandela himself. When everyone thought that he died in jail a long time ago, thereby truly believing it was so, and then it turned out that he was alive and even existing somehow. And so happens to many worldly events. I think you already encountered these sort of surprising situations in your life when you are sure that something happened while the entire environment around you insistently tries to prove you the contrary. What is this? A trick of the mind or something greater? In magic, of course, this would not be considered a trick of the mind. This concept doesn't exist in magic in general. The mind is considered to be so mighty, so multidimensional, that the concept of deceit does not exist there at all. But different projections exist, different visions and dimensions. The same thing can be applied to the Mandela effect. Reality flows along different probabilities and different options. In one of the probabilities Mandela is alive, in another probability Mandela is dead. In one of the probabilities your house was built, in another they didn't make it on time. You are living on a certain line, and sometimes these lines overlap, and transitions of the human consciousness from one line to another take place. This can be a perfectly insignificant factual difference, but yet it is there. And sometimes it happens that a few different probability lines join at a certain point in space and merge into one unique line. And so this fusion happens, forming like a historical event that didn't occur in reality. It happened in some other reality, but by coinciding with your habitual line of probabilities, it became a fact. There are actually many elements of this kind. When we start learning history, mythology and legends across a long period of time, we will find many stories of this kind. For example, the story with the famous city of Troy. It is considered that Schliemann has excavated the city. It is, let's say, officially considered so, not historically proven, meaning that whatever Schliemann excavated, nobody has a clue what it actually is. Firstly, it is said that he excavated like a gravedigger, who would dig a grave for his fierce enemy, in total frenzy. And so there was actually little that remained after such digging. He also was accused of fraud. All of this is of no importance now. It is simply that the mere fact of a historical Troy's existence has not been proved in any way. Or the events connected to the legendary King Arthur. Whether he really existed or he really didn't, did he fight all of these notorious battles or weren't there any at all, it is quite bleakly manifested in our history. Although few historical facts help find King Arthur along the Celtic line, but there is no trace that matches all the legendary background that is behind his historical presence. Can we say that the ancestors invented and made all of this up? Well, if we stick to the paradigm of linear time, then yes, they lied about everything. But mages form their historical descriptions in a slightly different way. They'll say, yes, all of it happened, but in another probability line. And King Arthur did fight 12 of his battles and then fought his 13th battle here in our reality. But as he came into this reality, he brought with him all of the previous 12 battles that didn't take place here. Same relates to the famous Solomon's Palace, for example, and the temple he raised in the name of his God. 
even though for some reason other gods used to live there as well. But this is just like this, a historical nuance. It still hasn't been excavated. It is still unclear whether there are remains of this temple at all. Historically, it doesn't exist, but legendary-wise it does. So did it actually exist? One could say the Jewish folk invented all of it, but mages will tell you that of course it existed, but in a parallel line. And this is very difficult. It is easy to hear, but extremely difficult to accept, at least in relation to one's own self. But if you start unfolding your own past sequence of events, you will see that you have actually experienced a number of these transitions. And one can, as a fact, call all of these unclear events a Mandela effect, all the events that exist in your life that can very reasonably and logically be explained by the presence of these different timeline currents. It is simply that one of the probabilities becomes dominant for you, for the one perceiving it, while another one stops being significant and hides in the subcortex, or in other words, hides in the depths of the subconscious and does not come out as a memory. It simply is isn't there, isn't there, and then manifests itself. Isn't there, isn't there, and then manifests itself as a certain element of your memory. Can this be considered a glitch of the consciousness? Sure, it can be considered a glitch, but in principle, everything has an explanation. This is why the use of terms such as hallucination or consciousness distortion are probably not really applicable to magical reality.